Now this is something that I often did. I was the junior guy on my team, so usually when we were rolled out, I was either driving or I was on the gun. And I was trained in the crow system, so we used it before, but you're out on a drive or a patrol or even sitting somewhere and you've got, you're scanning on this thing, you know. What are we doing here? <laughs> Literally a tank in the back now. That's ridiculous. Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, welcome back to another episode of Total Recoil. I'm your host, Israel Wright, former Green Beret, and with me, also a Green Beret, Nate Boyer. Yeah, stop saying former. Once a Green Beret, always a Green Beret. Hey, Come you know on. what? You're right, man. I, I'm putting From myself down. I, hey, I'm a Green Beret, all right? Yes, I'm Nate Boyer. Also a Green Beret. Not former, and I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy that you're here, Nate. Today we're gonna to be looking at vehicles, specifically from the game Squad. So everything from the Mat V to the M1 Abrams to maybe even a couple of civilian vehicles with, you know, just mounted weapons on the back, you know, whatever they got out on hand. But let's take a look, let's get started. All right, the Mat V. Now, this is something that you're more familiar with. Actually, it kind of looks like a version of the MRAP. When I was over in Iraq, the MRAP was just starting to be rolled out, but this is, looks like a variation on a theme. Yeah, no, it's very similar. I had rolled around in one as well. It doesn't have that back sort of canopy. Yeah. So that was an open air, almost like the back of a Humvee. Well, yeah. Exactly like the back of a Humvee in a sense. I love the attention to detail. They got the radio antennas there. That was my thing, or that was our thing actually, 18 Echoes. That would be our main responsibility, getting ready for a mission, you know. What I loved about these is, is they were the first army vehicle that I was in that had a really good air conditioner system. That's true. <laughs> they did. It's because they were new. Yes, yeah, because they were so new. So they went out within a few months. Yeah. <laughs> Much like the Humvees that I went in country with, you know. Not the most comfortable to sit in on a long, long ride though. Right. Also, you're in that back area with the meat of the vehicle and you're kind of just sitting sideways and straight up and down. You got yeah. body armor on. Yeah. Back problem. I remember the back, you could fit like five or six guys, maybe three on each side, you know, one uncomfortably in the middle for a long ride. Now, this is something that I often did. I was the junior guy on my team, so usually when we were rolled out, I was either driving or I was on the gun. This is a very familiar sight driving down the road. I love the sound. Giant bullets. <laughs> yeah. Swiss cheese. <laughs> yep. Looking down the sides and stuff. There we go. Appreciate that. <laughs> Very <laughs> accurate. You just get rid of that. You just throw that anywhere. <laughs> Common remotely operated weapon system, Crows. Yeah, the Crow system's pretty cool. I mean, the major benefit, I guess, is you don't have somebody up in the open air in the turret, you know, that's a potential target. But as we'll see when we get inside and look on that screen, you see about 10% of the battlefield. <laughs> which is tough, you know, when you're up in that turret, your head's on a swivel, you're seeing everything going on around you. You get in a firefight, yeah, you may be at a more of a disadvantage than if you're inside the vehicle, but you can't see as many potential threats from the cameras that they've got, at least from the ones that I operated on. And I was trained in the crow system, so we used it before, but you know, you're out on a drive or a patrol or even sitting somewhere and you've got, you're scanning on this thing, you know. I imagine it's like being in a tank. You just have a limited mm -hmm. vision. So that's a little bit of a disadvantage. But they're very accurate as well. Oh, nice. And you can zoom. Oh. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty cool. I love the tracer rounds or the ricochet, but I love seeing that. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Three tracer rounds in there for sure. All right, so you got the tow missile system. Deadly. Oh, yeah. I never got to play with this. I mean, the closest I ever got was nothing vehicle mounted, but I remember day out on the range, we uh, grabbed a couple cases of uh, AT4s. Yeah, AT4s. That's, I've done that. <laughs> that is fun. Pretty awesome yeah. from a vehicle to be, be <laughs> operating this bad boy up in the turret. Wow. That's... That's a death machine. <laughs> I like the sound. Cranking it? Yeah, cranking around in the turret. It's little details that I, I feel like gears. Squad puts a little bit of effort into that kind of stuff. Oh, I love the reloading animation. Yeah, just put that in work. Love it. That's cool. <laughs> nice. Obliterated. Deleted. What about our little Hesco bearers? I know it's such a small little thing, but you can tell that they did their research, you know? Yeah. All right, the Striker. This is not something I have a lot of experience with personally, but this is one of those really kind of modular vehicles. You know, it could be a troop carrier. They can stick a mortar in there. They can do medical setup kind of thing. It's really versatile. Yeah, it's not really used in the, in the special operations community typically, you know, the yeah. Striker Brigade. It's just different, so we wouldn't have that experience. They're pretty awesome. Yeah. I'd like to ride around one, but now we get to. <laughs> yeah. Just like real life. The MRAPs, I remember, they were pretty smooth ride comparatively. They were a little top heavy, as I recall. Couldn't go over like large bumps without kind of way you know, teeter-tottering back and forth you know right 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 <laughs> got the crow system here on this one looks like i see a mark 19 on it or 240. Yeah. Well, let's throw a mark 19 on there huh yeah. why not <laughs> mark 19 is fun to fun to shoot there we go oh, oh wow a little bit of countermeasures kind of thing interesting 
Ah, uh, the Now Abrams. the tanks. The M1A2 Abrams. Ah, uh, what a workhorse. It's been around since like, what, the 80s? This thing's been around a while. It looks very Gulf War. Every time I see those, I just think of the Gulf War. Yeah, Don't you? yeah. Schwarzkopf, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Ah, oh, so amazing. Do you see Fury, by the way? Love it. Oof. Love it, dude. Such a good one. You know that the director, David Ayer, is a veteran? Oh, is he a veteran? He's a veteran, yeah. Oh, that's wild. We did a great job on that one. That was really... It's intense. Yeah, it's really intense. <laughs> it makes yep. you not want to spend too much time in a tank. Yeah, man. To be really honest. But. I'm sure there's a few, like, modern comforts in this one, but, man, you can you imagine being a tanker in World War II? Yeah, they don't know. I mean, now they got the jacuzzi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a couple, yeah, there's a couple of drink holes <laughs> Shiatsu inside. massagers. Yeah, a little know. bar. But back then, no. <laughs> You got that giant 120 millimeter gun on the front. That is big. You got a 762. It looks like they got a smaller gun on top of the crow system, maybe. Yeah. A lot of bells and whistles, man. The armor combinations that they came up with for front and the side. I can't remember which type it was. I did get to ride around in a tank, though. Uh, I was up in Minnesota doing some outside the box training after the military, actually, with some people that paid a lot of money to go ride around in tanks. And, and shoot guns and stuff like that. And it was it was really cool. I enjoyed it actually. Not my preferred vehicle in a combat situation personally. The only experience I ever had inside an M1 Abrams was they brought one to the mall when I was like in high school. It was out in the parking lot and they were letting like kids like crawl up around it. And I got into the gunner seat. They must have forgotten to turn something off because I remember making the turret go up and down, you know, nice. stuff. And they're like, everybody get out, everybody get out of the tank, get out of the tank. You fired off the 120 mic <laughs> mic and they were like, all right, we're done here. No, we're done. That's uh, never going to do this work again. You get the 1500 horsepower engine in there, rolling down. I wonder, I wonder what the top speed of Abrams is. Probably faster than you think. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, they got how many people? Four guys in here? I don't actually know. Yeah, Gunner, a loader, a driver, and then the commander. That's like uh, you ever see Courage Under Fire with Denzel, mm -hmm. Meg Ryan. He's a tank commander in the first part of that one. He goes into the Gulf War. I love the communication that they have with you know, loading, firing, acquiring a target, you know? So that 50 cal was automated as well. Yeah, looks like but it. But not, it wasn't a crow system or anything. Maybe he's I mean, up there. They were looking through the window downstairs. Oh, uh, okay. Now it looks like they're actually out there. But now, yeah, he's definitely up in, in the flesh. That's a last resort situation there. Anyway. Right. <laughs> if you're in a tank, you don't want to be outside of that tank fighting. No, Yep. Oh, the Bradley. Classic. I remember the Bradley. There's one specific memory I have of the Bradley at my basic training graduation, or AIT graduation. And they'd have a couple of Bradleys out on the field. They'd have them driving around to rock and roll music. Oh, yeah, You right. know, people be throwing out smoke grenades yeah, exactly. and stuff. Yeah, the dog watch. and pony, baby. Yeah, dog and pony. Good dog and pony. I would prefer to have a giant cannon on this guy, too, though. You yeah. I mean? They got, I think it's a 20, uh, M242 25 millimeter chain gun. I always thought it looked kind of odd with that little the little turret gun on there. Yeah. A cute little like gun a, there. You need like a Gatling. Yeah. You know, from an A10 or something. You yeah. Something like that. It's a diesel engine, right? I almost think all of them are pretty much diesel vehicle wise in the military. I don't mm -hmm. know how much gasoline. Oh, yeah. So it's a troop carrier, really just kind of infantry fighting vehicle mainly, I guess. Like pew, pew, pew. Looks like they're fighting for the dark side. <laughs> oh, it's got a toe? Looks like it. Oh, okay. There's the secret. Weapon. Where was that? I didn't even see it. When we I, I didn't see it on, yeah, on the initial thing. Ah, okay. It's got some insurgent vehicles, some civilian vehicles mounted with whatever they got. Looks like out of 50 cal. Hey. Oh boy. <laughs> when I was in Iraq, I saw some contractors out on the road and they'd have a technical, they'd have something like this with something mounted on the back too, yeah. given the budget they have. Got all the ammo in there, nice detail. We drove the Hilux over here. You ever get to drive the Hilux huh? around? Oh, That's yeah. not something Let's that... see a Forerunner. Yeah. You know, it's their version. I think the Hilux is one of the most common vehicles in the world actually, but they don't have it in America. What's happening? Always out to the range. I oh. love the slide, the little yeah. Tokyo Drift. A little power slide. <laughs> the wear and tear factor is on something like that. Mounting it into a truck that maybe that's not initially what it's designed for. Then again, maybe they're pretty tough. I don't know. Yeah, so the would, there, would there be certain missions within this video game where that's the vehicle you need to ride in on? It could be that you might play as the insurgents and this uh, is be what you get to choose from. You don't get a fighting vehicle a Bradley or a Striker, you have to use one of them. That makes a lot of sense, especially with the way that gaming is now, where everybody's playing online against each other and right. team against team. It's not really, not really playing against a computer. Anymore. Right, yeah. And you're not, you're not gonna have two U.S. forces against you. You're gonna have the U.S. force and then yeah. the insurgency force or whatever. Gotcha. Mortar. Okay. I like it. <laughs> That's gonna be hell on the shocks. It'll take some doing to bolt that thing into place. Yeah. I've seen don't, the- Just don't tip it too low. Right. <laughs> Right what in that compartment, the you know, true lies, you know, where the guy's firing the stinger outside and it blows the guy out the front, you know? Let's see some impact here. You know? Looks like a semi-automatic mortar. Yeah, I haven't seen one like that. I don't yeah. see any hands like feeding it in. Maybe they just ran out of money. I never trained mortar. I was 11 Charlie, I think. ZU-23. Whoa! Okay. Look at that! 
How does that drive without the front coming out? <laughs> yeah, that's the, the, the little back heavy. Yeah, no kidding. That's so funny. I wonder if this is one of those things where it's, you know, it's in a certain configuration when you're driving and then you have to stop. They Maybe plant those that. legs out there. They just took that off a tank. <laughs> this what it looks like. Doesn't yeah, it really does, yeah. That would be terrifying though, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Seeing that thing coming yeah. at you? Yeah, I wouldn't follow that truck. No tailgating. Yeah, exactly. Oh my goodness, that looks like an old school, like old Soviet block kind of guy. I just want to see it go. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's it, that's it for the day. The MP1. What are we doing here? <laughs> Literally a tank in the back now. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's hilarious. This game is so unrealistic. Oh my god, it really is just like they transpose something to like a turret off a tank. Although this is probably grounded in some sort of reality. I'm sure this has happened. I know somehow. I somehow. Not with a tank turret, but <laughs> I did see pickup trucks with armor plates bolted on there. That's something I did see. Just the barrel of that weapon is so heavy. I know. The Grom 73 smooth bore cannon. That's what they got on there. And out to the range. Power slide. Engaged. Oh, uh, this is more of a timid driver. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> Maybe Unless you can't power. It'll just tip over. Yeah. yeah. Love the uh, sights on that. A lot of the ranges that we had either in country or maybe up at uh, Fort Lewis. Old tanks, they put old like vehicles out there you could shoot at right, and stuff. Yeah. Very satisfying, you hear that ping. You know? Well, I love the, the sound, the reloading audio. I love that. You ever been fired at? Any kind of artillery, rocket attacks, things yeah. like that? Yeah, mortar attacks, fired at with an RPG. Yeah, there would be oftentimes in Iraq and both. We would have to go indoors because there'd be some sort of mortar attack or rocket right. attack. Just randomly, mostly at the airstrip that we were next to. But sometimes they would get a little off, you know. M1151. Oh, nice. Oh, it's okay. This is, it looks like, yeah, improved armoring. Looks like they bolted on a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I like the black though. Yeah. It's what we call murdered out. I would see these vehicles and they, they'd be all blacked out and they'd have the armor plating kind of bolted on there, you know? Looks like that's a Dishka on top. Soviet heavy machine gun. Definitely been fired at by a Dishka. Yeah? Very yeah, in Afghanistan for sure. What does Dishka mean in Russian? That's a great question. <laughs> a little bit of trivia for it. it means dear or beloved. Dear or beloved? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> Sick sense of humor. Like Dishka, we are gathered here today. <laughs> this is the Soviet heavy machine gun. This vehicle does not have AC. Ah! <laughs> and Obviously. it wouldn't matter if it did. All that black, yeah, armor plating absorbing the sun. The hottest days I spent in Iraq or Afghanistan were sitting in a Humvee for hours on end waiting. The last part of one of our that missions, sucks. the AC actually broke. And so we were. I mean, the last part. They always break. <laughs> Things never work. Just baking in your own juices, man. Then you got helmet and body armor on. Yes. You better have a cooler in there somewhere with some melted ice. Right, exactly. All right, well, a couple different vehicles from squad. Nate, what did you think about the footage that we saw? I thought it was pretty cool. It was nice to experience some of the vehicles that we didn't get to ever ride in. <laughs> right. And also relive like the crow system, you know, something I haven't messed with in a while and yeah. see that again. Yeah, once again, they don't skimp on detail. They touch on everything. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, nothing really quite compares to actually driving around in one of these things, you know, and having the AC break and all that good stuff. And the noise. And the noise, Incredibly yeah. loud, you know, uncomfortable, your back's on fire, so like, I would prefer this. Folks, if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and check out Gameology's Facebook and YouTube page. And if you want to hang out with me a little bit more, go over to twitch.tv slash myhappyself. Nate, where can people find you online? You can find me at NateBoyer37 on social media. He's going to be hanging out. He's going to step out onto the street corner here if you want to hang out with him. Yeah. Just go over there. It's on, it's on the corner. You'll find it. 24. That's true, actually. And yeah. Why would you tell them that? Cut. We didn't cut it. Cut it off. Cut it off. Any experiences like that? Is see the... you. No! Never the plane will hold for us. Oh, it was a male plane. How can you tell? Look at the little balls. Little balls. I'll wait.